even as the Russia investigation reportedly nears its first possible indictment of a Trump associate, the GOP is insisting on ramming through a radical plan to repeal Obamacare without even waiting to find out what it does. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Of course, with everything else going on, Trump has also been preoccupied lately with the North Korean nuclear program. And since it seems like threats and sanctions have not stopped North Korean leader Kim Jong-un so far, Trump is trying out a new tactic, nicknames. Over the weekend, he tweeted, I spoke with President Moon of South Korea last night, asked him how Rocket Man is doing. And then today, he repeated the nickname, not in a tweet, but in his first speech to the United Nations General Assembly. The United States has great strength and patience. But if it is forced to defend itself or its allies, we will have no choice but to totally destroy North Korea. Rocket Man is on a suicide mission for himself and for his regime. Why are you calling him Rocket Man? That's not a diss. That's a cool nickname. <laughs> you're making him sound like a character from Top Gun. Hey, hey, Rocket Man, you're on a suicide mission. And there's only one way to settle this, on the volleyball court. <laughs> so Trump... Trump is again threatening North Korea with military force, even though that seems to have failed as a strategy so far. In fact, as we know, Trump loves talking about the military. He surrounded himself with generals, called for massive increases in military spending, and during a meeting with French President Emmanuel Macron yesterday, Trump talked about how much he loved France's Bastille Day military parade and suggested he might want to replicate it here in the U.S. on the 4th of July. It was one of the greatest parades I've ever seen. Uh, it was two hours on the button, and it was military might. They had representatives from different wars and different uniforms. We're going to have to try and top it. But we had a lot of planes going over, and we had a lot of military might. Trump talks about the military like a kid who just got home from his first air show. We had a lot of planes going overhead, and one of them did a flip, and another one made a boom. And then when we landed, one of the pilots, he tossed me his sunglasses, and he said, hey, kid, I'll see you in the skies. And then I said, Thanks, Rocket Man. <laughs> of course, it might be a little foolhardy to make plans for next July, considering the speed with which the Russia investigation is engulfing Trump's White House. Yesterday was yet another bombshell about the Russia investigation being conducted by special counsel Robert Mueller, suggesting that Mueller may be close to indicting one of Trump's closest associates, his former campaign chief, Paul Manafort. Breaking news tonight on special counsel Robert Mueller's case against Paul Manafort. According to the New York Times, when federal agents executed a search warrant on Manafort's Virginia home two months ago, which was reported more recently, the special counsel followed up with a warning. His prosecutors told Manafort they planned to indict him. Quote, Paul J. Manafort was in bed early one morning in July when federal agents bearing a search warrant picked the lock on his front door and raided his Virginia home. They took binders stuffed with documents and copied his computer files, looking for evidence that Manafort had set up secret offshore bank accounts. They even photographed the expensive suits in his closet. That's right, they photographed his expensive suits. Well, Manafort might like to shop at Armani, but where he's headed is definitely more of a men's warehouse. <laughs> now, the hard-nosed tactics being used by Mueller have been described by some as a shock and awe approach, with one former independent counsel saying Mueller's approach is intended to scare people into telling him the truth. They are setting a tone. It's important early on to strike terror in the hearts of people in Washington or else you will be rolled. And if there's anyone who can strike terror in the hearts of people in Washington, it's Robert Mueller. Look at him. He looks like the door knocker on a haunted castle. Another former prosecutor said the investigation resembled the way law enforcement has historically gone after the mob, telling the Times they seem to be pursuing this more aggressively, taking a much harder line than you'd expect to see in a typical white-collar case. This is more consistent with how you go after an organized crime syndicate. And that is so unfair. How dare anyone call the Trump administration organized? <laughs> They're basically... Come on. Organized. They're basically running the government like a Roomba. Yeah, we just go until we hit a wall and then go somewhere else. And 
We suck the whole time. So, so with the Russian investigation escalating rapidly, how is the president's legal team responding? Well, yesterday, the New York Times reported that there are internal divisions between Trump's lawyers over how much to cooperate with the special counsel. Trump's lawyer, Ty Cobb, has accused the White House counsel, Don McGahn, together known as Franklin and Stash, of withholding sensitive information from the rest of the team. According to the Times, Cobb said to McGahn, he's got a couple documents locked in a safe. The craziest part, though, is how the New York Times found out about Cobb's comments. It wasn't from an interview or an anonymous source. Instead, Cobb was overheard by a reporter for the New York Times discussing the dispute during a lunchtime conversation at a popular Washington steakhouse. The Trump administration is worried about leaks, and yet it keeps hiring people who are the physical manifestation of leaks. <laughs> when they talk, it should just be the sound of air escaping a balloon. <laughs> now, obviously, we don't know yet where the Russian investigation will lead, but one thing's for sure, it will continue to infuriate Trump, who remains obsessed with both the 2016 election and, in particular, Hillary Clinton. So much so that he retweeted a video from a fan account over the weekend that made it look like he hit Hillary in the back with a golf ball. And hey, man, I don't know if you noticed, but you're the one under FBI investigation with approval ratings in the low 30s. If you're gonna post memes of yourself golfing, at least make them more accurate. And yet, he was so happy to swallow, he's so happy to eat a golf ball. <laughs> and yet, even with these scandals swirling around a historically unpopular president, Trump's party is still trying to push through his domestic agenda, specifically his promise to repeal and replace Obamacare. The GOP is like your friend who knows only one song on the guitar, and he's drunk, and no one wants to hear it, but he's tuning it up again. Republicans are pushing a new bill that is in many ways even more radical than previous bills. The new bill would eliminate Obamacare subsidies for private insurance and end the Medicaid expansion. States could allow for waivers that let insurers charge sick patients higher premiums and stop covering certain benefits required under the Affordable Care Act, like maternity care or prescription drugs. Although last week, when Trump first heard about the new GOP health care bill being advanced in the Senate, he talked about it in vague terms and made clear he had no idea what it was. We'll be discussing probably a little bit of health care because I know some information's come to light. Some information's come to light. Every time Trump talks about health care, he sounds like a teaser trailer for a soap opera. Next week on an all-new Trump Care. We had to go with the health care first, and we're doing well. I think we're going to have some great surprises. What kind of surprises? <laughs> this latest attempt to ramp through a health care bill that would literally take money away from vulnerable people without letting people know what it would do is why Democrats need to be extremely careful before making any deals with Trump and the GOP. Trump has apparently commented recently that it's much easier to get along with Democratic leaders Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi than with GOP leaders Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell. According to Politico, Trump has dismissed Ryan as, quote, a Boy Scout and complained in private that it's difficult to have any sort of relationship or even make small talk with Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Oh, I wish I could see Trump trying to make small talk with Mitch McConnell. <laughs> do you have a gold apartment? I do not, Mr. President. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why does your face look like that? <laughs> Meanwhile, after a meeting between Trump and Schumer, his fellow New Yorker, a congressman who was present, said Trump and Schumer got along so well, it was almost like a love-in at times. And Schumer was caught on a hot mic on the Senate floor gushing about how much Trump likes the Democrats. And him in particular, even telling a colleague that his new partnership with Trump would go smoothly. He likes us. He likes me anyway. Here's what I told him. I said, Mr. President, you're much better off if you can sometimes step right and sometimes step left. If you have to step just in one direction, you're boxed. He gets that. Oh, it's gonna work out. No! It won't work out! <laughs> He'll only be your ally as long as you're useful to him. Haven't you seen how he treats his friends? First, you'll stand behind him at a press conference, and the next thing you know, you're eating nachos and yelling at people at baseball games.
It's a precipitous fall. Remember, this is still the same Donald Trump who ran a cruel, bigoted campaign who called Mexicans rapists, bragged about committing sexual assault, and fired the FBI director for investigating his administration. In fact, just last week, after an attack on the London Underground, before any details were known, Trump doubled down on his call for a Muslim travel ban. Trump tweeting, the travel ban into the United States should be far larger, tougher, and more specific. But stupidly, that would not be politically correct. And then there was this. We have made more progress in the last nine months against ISIS than the Obama administration has made in eight years. Must be proactive and nasty. Must be proactive and nasty? That's not a terrorism strategy. That's a Prince B-side. <laughs> you know what? Can we actually hear a little proactive and nasty? Nasty. That's it. <laughs> so one of Trump's closest associates is on the verge of being indicted, and the GOP is trying to ram through a massively unpopular bill that could strip health care away from millions. I'll say it again. Donald Trump is really hitting a hole-in-one. <laughs> right into his own mouth. This has been A Closer Look.